this morning in Executive Council and Cabinet considered this matter last night after an extensive process, which I'll ask the Attorney-General to talk you through. Uh, but first of all, can I say to all of those in Melbourne in particular and across Victoria, again, congratulations and I hope you enjoy being out and about. I know you've been waiting a long time for that. And I would just encourage you to, as you open safely, that's the way to remain safely open um, into the future. Uh, but I'm sure it has been quite a day and quite a, a late night for some down there in Melbourne. I can completely understand that. And I just encourage everybody to continue to, as we open up to do that, uh, conscious of, of the various other restrictions and other things that remain in place. And we'll continue to make strong progress there in the weeks and months ahead as we work towards that Christmas deadline, uh, which uh, the National Cabinet has given strong support for uh, to get open by Christmas, of course, with the exception of Western Australia. Also, can I note today is the National Memorial Day for Fire and Emergency Services. And earlier today, a memorial service was held here in Canberra. And uh, this is, a, I know, a very important day for, for all Australians, but particularly those who have lost loved ones. Um, through their service to the community. And if you'd just indulge me, I would like to just read the names of those 14 people who'd lost their lives and were remembered this morning, those 14 responders. Philip Bell, Ian Long, Robert Penitz, Geoffrey Keaton and Andrew O'Dwyer, Sam McPaul, Colin Burns, Ian Macbeth, Rick de Morgan Jr, Paul Hudson, Bill Slade, Matthew Kavanagh, David Moresi and George Baldock. We thank them for their incredible service to our country. Some of them came from across the seas to be here at our moment of greatest need. And we remember them and we, and we think of their families who deal with their loss every single day. Earlier this year on Australia Day, I actually went to the memorial service, some of you may recall, with my daughters on Australia Day and I'd encourage um, those particularly who live in Canberra or those who are visiting Canberra, to take a moment and go and visit that memorial. It's a very moving place, I think, for all Australians. Can I now move um, to the issue, though, that has um, led to us joining here this morning? This morning, the Governor-General accepted the advice of the Government to appoint the Honourable Justice Simon Stewart and the Honourable Justice Jacqueline Gleeson as the next Justices of the High Court of Australia. They will fill the vacancies that will arise upon the retirements of the Honourable Justice Geoffrey Nettle AC on the 30th of November this year, who will be replaced by Justice Simon Stewart, and the Honourable Virginia Bell AC on the 28th of February 2021, who will be replaced by Justice Gleeston. I want to thank uh, Justices Nettle and Bell in advance of their upcoming retirements for their many years of judicial service to the Australian people. I'll ask the Attorney to speak to both of these appointments and as well as the process that we've gone through exhaustively to arrive at uh, this decision on these appointments. The High Court is one of the most important institutions of our democracy, and every justice appointed to it carries a significant burden to uphold the laws of our land. I congratulate Justice Stewart and Gleeson, and I wish them all the best for their very important service. Attorney. Thank you, Prime Minister. And I join with the Prime Minister in congratulating the Honourable Justice Simon Stewart and the Honourable Justice Jacqueline Gleeson as the next two Justices of the High Court of Australia. Um, I and the Cabinet are incredibly confident that both Justice Stewart and Justice Gleeson will make very worthy additions to the High Court bench. Uh, they're both outstanding judges. They have been outstanding barristers. They're outstanding members of the legal and broader Australian community. Just a very brief summary of the process that leads us to this point. The process uh, has been about six months and starts with a statutory requirement upon myself as Attorney General to consult with all of the State Attorneys General. Behind the state-based consultation sits a whole range of state-based bar associations and law societies and a range of groups. Uh, those bodies are also consulted with by me on a Commonwealth level. Uh, as well as heads of jurisdiction across Australia. So it is an exhaustive and extensive process, and the two appointments have emerged from that very long and extensive process with uh, the legal community, I think, noting throughout their consultation that both uh, have absolutely impeccable records and skills for the High Court. Justice Stewart will commence on 1 December and replace the Honourable Justice Geoffrey Nettle AC who retires from the court at the end of next month. 
Uh, the appointment of Justice Stewart to the High Court continues what has been a remarkable, stellar, indeed, career for one of Australia's uh, leading legal professionals. Uh, it was noted when uh, he was um, brought into the federal court that he took silk in 2009, just 10 years out from law school, being the first person in his graduating, graduating class to do that. He was appointed in 2018 to the Federal Court of Australia, where he has demonstrated exemplary judicial skills and achieved wide recognition as a leading expert with specialty areas in taxation and administrative law. And I have no doubt that his years of experience, both at the bar and on the bench of the Federal Court, will provide um, invaluable um, skills for his new commission as a Justice of the High Court. With respect to Justice Gleeson, uh, Justice Gleeson <coughs> excuse me, will commence next year on 1 March, replacing the Honourable Virginia Bell AC, who will retire from the court on 28 February 2021. Justice Gleeson was appointed to the Federal Court in 2014. Uh, she's held in obvious and very high regard by all the members of the judiciary and the legal profession. She was appointed to the Federal Court following a diverse legal career, both at the bar and as a solicitor. And in fact, the diversity of Justice Gleeson's expertise across a number of civil jurisdictions in both public and private practice has served the Federal Court incredibly well and will no doubt be a major asset to the High Court going forward. Her appointment to the High Court represents yet another very significant achievement in an already distinguished career. Uh, I should note, and um, it's not really possible to appoint uh, Her Honour Justice Jacqueline Gleeson without noting um, that um, she is the eldest daughter of former High Court Chief Justice Murray Gleeson. Uh, that places her in a rather uh, unique position. I'm told that's a, a first in common law countries. I might just pause very briefly and say that I, I note that because it's notable. But looking through the CVs of both Justice uh, Stewart and Justice Gleeson, their families have played an enormous role. Uh, parents nurturing people, uh, partners and children supporting people through their career, and there's been a long history of broad family support for each of these two very fine judges to have been nurtured to the point where they can provide the sort of skills and impeccable track record that they bring to the public service on the High Court. I'd just like to close by taking the opportunity, of course, to thank the Honourable Justice Nettle and Justice Bell uh, in advance of their upcoming retirements for the remarkable service they've given the Australian people through the High Court. Thank you. Happy to take, let's take questions on the appointments first, but happy to move to other issues. Yeah. It, it, it weighed very heavily on my mind and the mind of Cabinet. Uh, and the, the consultation process we went through starts with a long list, and as you'll see, that list becomes uh, shorter with each iteration. Uh, but th that is something that has played on Cabinet's mind. Uh, and there are always uh, people from all over Australia geographically considered in that list. But you, there are future appointments, obviously. Uh, but that did play very much on our mind.